All right, thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. You're just in time for the next conversation of the day. This is Youth and Politics, where we take a look at the stories making headlines in terms of politics and dissect them. In particular, we shall be looking at the issue of uh, the 2022 general election. It is exactly one year to the election. Are we ready for that? Is the IEBC ready? Are Kenyans ready? Economically, is it possible to have these elections legally? Is it possible? Or do we have, are we looking into a, 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 a lacuna in law that has uh, you know, uh, not been quite looked into yet? Will the elections be nullified if these things are not looked into? Well, these are the, some of the issues we shall take uh, uh, in our glimpse at this particular Monday morning. I'm joined to my extreme left, uh, to my extreme right rather, by John Mwati. He is an economist and political analyst. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you're well. Yes, very much well. Thank uh -huh. you for having me on the show. Uh -huh. Looking forward to an amazing conversation Thank this you. Morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm also joined by uh, Evans uh, Amaro Dool. He is a youth leader of course. and a political analyst. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, uh -huh. brother. Hope you're well. I'm well. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, pleasure. But before we, before we touch on the issues of uh, politics, I cannot fail to say this. Kipchoge came. Eliud Kipchoge. Eliud Kipchoge. He did a very good thing, yeah. you know, winning. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know who was giving us the tips when you were off air, it is Evans here. <laughs> Evans is the one who was telling us about the numbers. You were following the Olympics? Actually, I was following it. Um, uh, there was a lot of interest invested in it and stuff, of course. Uh. So, um, for Hollywood Kipchoge, you know, it, everybody, many people in the country uh, uh, burnt the midnight oil watching yeah. the marathon and stuff. Because we know, you know, people are confident. Him having uh, set the record, I think it's uh, one hour and 59. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of things. And um, so it w we were, look, you know, uh, for the past one week, Kenyans, we were kind of disappointed uh, with the first, uh, you see, one of our own, Otieno, being, uh, being suspended. Yeah. Because uh, he failed the doping test. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, and of course, the Ferdinand Omanyala. We thought that he could, uh, he could make, make it us. to the finals. Yeah, but mm. actually, he, 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 he was number three. Yeah, yeah. and mm. he bet. For your information, he beat Johan Blake. Uh, Johan Blake better. finished sixth, mm -hmm. but Omanya Lawa on finished third. Yeah, but 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 these this Olympics have really been uh, like uh, a call to order. Mm -hmm. I don't know for Kenyans yeah. true, true. because I, I was looking at uh, many people, not not just Kipchoge. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we have people like uh, Hel Helen Obiri, mm -hmm. we have Irene Jeptai, you know, uh, uh, so, many, so many people who uh, came up to uh, represent the country. Yeah. Yet, not to say that we didn't perform well, mm -hmm. okay. but even though we did well in the athletics, yeah. there are also other, 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 in the field events. Yes. There are also other places that we kind of uh, didn't do that well. Yeah. Like Julius Iego, you know, uh, I, I was expecting Julius to... Of course, you know, he's a sportsman, and of course, with these people, we have um, maybe shortcomings and yeah. limitations yeah. and challenges. Um, maybe we placed a lot of expectations. Uh, like, um, you know, Diego is a big name in this country. Yeah. Diego uh, is made as proud, of course, he's a me gold medalist and um, javelin. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. I, I, I believe that uh, in as much as um, whatever it may be, Mm. Uh, uh, despite the challenges and stuff, we are number one in Africa. I think that's, mm. th that's something oh, which is What do you think about that, Moti? But I think, according to me, one of the things that I would actually say, the yeah. government, yeah. Uh, we shouldn't be waiting for big events. The government should, uh, in, in, a, in a way, in a greater capacity, yeah. capacity build uh, our own people. Our yeah. own people. And I think we have had a, a challenge where you actually, you, you, when you engage these people who are actually going to represent the country, uh -huh. they will tell you point blank. There is a lot of kuachiliwa, you know. Uh. And, and these people are looked for when there are these Olympics and these uh, uh, major, uh, major global events where they are actually expected to actually represent the country. But the investment that is required of them to be done to them by the government. Mm. Why, don't, why do we have mismanagement of, uh, of, of public parastatals, 
of uh, agencies that are actually mandated to actually bring up these and nurture the talents of the young uh, the, There have been conversations about uh, how uh, the sports arena is, mm -hmm. the sports industry, mm -hmm. that when we have events, mm -hmm. big events like this, most of the uh, focus is put on the officials of the sports mm -hmm. events mm -hmm. rather than the participants. Mm -hmm. yeah. All the events, yes, the, the athletes, those who are going to be yeah. on the field, and on the, the ground. And the officials are actually cartels because they are there to fulfill their own interests, That's to a drive that their interests. Uh. And, I, and I know that is a conversation that young people uh, are, are actually being left out in the majority of Kenyans, yeah. but it's a, it's, the, it's a real conversation that we need we to have, be having. We have a, a, you know, a player, uh, Jeb Chechir, mm -hmm. who also won. She had to kneel down. <laughs> she knelt down, uh, you know, head to her knees after claiming the Olympic Women's Marathon uh, 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 on Saturday. You know, it's, it's, it, it was quite um, a moving moment for yeah, Kenya. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Yes, we have our hits, but ag again, we have our misses. Our misses. But uh, let's talk about the hits, at least. Uh, what, what word uh, of, of, of encouragement would you, would, you know, do you have for, for Kenya? Atakama to lipoteza zingine, there are those that will to lipata. And for, as a country, at least we, we know how to, to, to grab all the, 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 the small winnings that we get. No matter, no matter how small they are, we are really proud of them. One of the things that I would actually say, we are the, the heritage of our country. Proud of where we come from. Yeah. And when I see Kipchoge running that marathon, I feel as if he's running on behalf of the country. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the medals that we win, regardless of the, the situations that, that we find ourselves in Kenya in terms of the way things are, you know, we are, it's like we are going on a deep uh, uh, spiral. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when all is said and done, that is the pride that comes with being patriotic mm -hmm. in being a Kenyan. We are proud to be Kenyans. We are proud to be Kenyans. And uh, um, even when things are tough, you still feel when the, the national anthem is being sung there and being played. It was played uh, twice. Mm -hmm. Feels My really God. Nice. Yes. Twice. Quite amazing. Quite amazing. You know, it's not the first time. Of course, um, looking at um, Kenya, I think the main issue here is um, stratification of these sports and talents. You know, a good number of people in this country mm. are so much into football. Men. We are so much into football. Many people are not so much interested in athletics, be it the short races or the long races. Uh, of course, when it looked at from a different perspective, you'll realize that there is a given section of the country mm -hmm. which has, it is given that, that yeah. you get to be maybe so and so for you to maybe participate in this kind of thing. Yeah, but of yeah. course they have proven it. Mm -hmm. It is true that they have proven it. Mm -hmm. So there's no problem. Of yeah. the, okay. issue, the main issue is how to manage the talent. Mm. You know, I was even looking at this story. The, there's this lady, a, a, a very big hero in this Olympic, Faith Kipiegon. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, you, she, 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 won a, she won gold, I think in 1500 yeah. meters. Mm -hmm. Looking at her story and stuff, it is so encouraging. It in, is. In looking at the limitations she underwent and stuff. And she's actually a mother. Yeah, she's a mother, of course. Yeah. So mm. it is something which, uh, the resilience in these people, yeah. Uh, I think it is something which we need to comment. Yeah, yeah. we're proud to be Kenyans. Of course, get you know, Kenyans, let's send in our messages of encouragement, you know, and congratulations to the uh, our athletes. Uh, tell them something, you know, tell them kudos, tell them well done, you know, give them a pat on the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one, one thing that stood out, I was looking at for most of my friends on their status, they, was, they, they had Kipchoge's, uh, you know, photo yes. on their status during, the, during this weekend. With the flag. We, we, you know, with the flag. Yes. Uh, his second gold medal. You know, I found Olympic. It, I found the statuses, the Facebook, what have you, until I was like, let me not join the bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> you did not know. No, not that I'm not, you don't have peer pressure. It, it, that's how I termed it by then. <laughs> but, but of course, it is good that uh, this guy made us proud. You know, these people, they, we had four gold medals, four silver. And I don't know how many number of bronze, how many bronze. But look at that. We did well. We did and, well. And uh, the, the, the events which we were get, make, getting these things from, mm. they are not just child spray. Yeah, yeah. it's Marathon, not easy. My friend. It's not easy. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and by the way, speaking of which, you know, Y254 is a proud, uh, uh, you know, uh, a sponsor of, uh, or, or partner 
of uh, of of uh, you know all our Kenyans there. This is a place where you is your, we are your proud sports partner. This is a place you can be able to watch your football matches where from the comfort of your living room. All you have to do is just you know turn that dial and tune into Y254 and get to watch your your football matches live. Tonight we have two matches lined up for you. Two. One at 7:30 p.m. The next one it will be at 9:45 p.m. So the first one will be at 7:30 p.m. live here on on, on Y254. The uh, uh, we shall have the second one at 9:45 p.m. Uh, also right here on Y254. Ensure that you tune in to these matches and watch them here live. Remember, we are live on DSTV 360, 376 channel 376 on DSTV 824 on Signet and uh, uh, channel 54 on Star times we are also live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 ensure that you also use the hashtag y in the morning as you participate with this conversation this particular morning at rambaguko and at sankara kayesu as we continue sending your messages in regards to the olympics kenya is doing well proud to be kenyan proud proud yeah well, uh, still, we, we are taking a look at st stories making headlines and what took trend in the past uh, one week. We had the killings that took place in, uh, was it M? M, M yeah. Yes. Yes, such a sad story. Um, let, me, let me get your thoughts in regards to this, the, the, these uh, uh, killings. And uh, just in brief, because I know it's an issue that is still under investigation, uh, your thoughts in regards to this, because it brought in a lot of... Uh, emotional comments you know Kenyans went on Twitter to talk it was even trending yeah you, you know it is not the first time uh, people of this country are uh, facing this issue yeah extrajudicial killings actually the citizen people dying in the hands of the police officers uh, the police officers are um, trained huh? I believe so though, no though I've never been into that training but I believe they are, that they are. Trained. I've seen that the training is, training is very rigorous. I know, but, but they're trained to protect Kenyans. Yeah. We pay them taxes to protect us. There's nothing painful like losing a family member, for instance. You know, with us, we can sit here. We, we are not so much pinched, you know. When, um, we can just hear it from the news and, of course, see it and watch and stuff. But when it comes to now losing, uh, losing a child, for instance, it is, th these are very mm. serious things. And from the people we expect to protect them. You know. Someone at the age of 19 years. That losing age. a life. Right? Somebody who still age. got life to live. And, mm. uh, to me, uh, okay, you asked about my thoughts. I think the, 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 the government, through yeah. the criminal justice system, should come forward and do this thing with, with the... They should face it with, the, with all the... With, with their all. Uh -huh. Ensure that maybe the people who are culpable are brought to book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's all I can say. All right. They get to be they, these people get to have justice at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, uh, about that matter. Let me take you back before even we handle the case in Embu. You know, I it, it, um, this is a matter that is quite um, controversial. Yeah. Living in a state that does not actually regard the sanctity of human life, regardless of where you come from or what you believe in. We all agree that there is sacredness to human life. Yes. And I think in our country today that has not been um, brought out clearly. You feel so? I feel so in a very great sense. March 25, March 25th, mm. 2020, the president issues um, a, a declaration mm -hmm. about the curfew that was to start on March 27, 2020. But mm -hmm. 10 days later, six Kenyans have been killed when the curfew has actually been imposed. And one of, the, one of the people that were actually killed was a 13-year-old kid called Hussein Moyo in Kiamaiko. I don't know yeah, if you guys yeah, remember yeah, yeah, I know the story. story. Yeah. It was quite, the, 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 the little kid is actually on the balcony at night and he's watching down the, the police. They're actually imposing the curfew. But, but you know but, what the but police that one, but, but that one, the, the, the police, they actually uh, flash them using their flashlights and they actually shoot the boy on the stomach. And he's taken to the hospital and dies. And you can see over and over again about extrajudicial killings that have no basis in our country. Yet these op officers, they actually, what, what the, the, the farthest that they can do 
is actually transfer the, the officers. Something that is, I mean, it breaks down. It breaks our hearts to see such rot in the people that are actually supposed to protect our, our, our Okay, our you, you know, when you, when you look at the conflict between the civilians and the people, the men in uniform, it is not only in Kenya. It is in various countries in the, of the world. You remember last year uh, between Chauvin and uh, George Floyd, uh, mm. the, the, the police US. officer who killed. Uh, they, they but you know, these two, these, these cases are different. No, you know, no just get the point. Because okay. they're isolated cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, 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 I request that you get the point. Mm. What I'm driving at is, in the two incidents, uh, the uh, police officer is killing a civilian. But w the issue here is, how do you deal with the case? Look at how the American justice system... The justice system. De de ...dealt with the case there. And how we've been dealing with ours here. That's, where I'm driving, that's what I'm driving at. So, so you're saying, even though the cases are different, isolated, yeah. it's about... How you handle how you handle these cases how you handle this because for for, for for that child who died uh, on, on, on in, uh, in their own home yes it was still it was a case under investigation i don't know how still, far i don't know how far they've gone it's still under investigation yeah, the family is actually distraught yeah feeling a little bit but, disappointed with the system yeah but uh you know um i'm, I'm thinking of how kenyans you know reacts to such cases the, the way kenyans you know uh, uh, uh move through for example, during riots, yeah. how do Kenyans behave during uh, protests? How do they handle themselves? What kind of methodologies do they use during protests? Do they aggravate the situation? Because these are law keepers, they are p policy uh, keepers. They will uh, try to maintain law and order. So if you break that order, because there is law and there is order, but do you do realize we maintain as Kenyans, do we maintain order? Do you realize that even the first place of having a peaceful demonstration is actually a far fetched dream in this country? You say that you're actually going to have not a only peaceful in Kenya, in demonstration. Uh -huh. You know, we are and we it's are not actually a the police are actually supposed to protect the Monaiji. But do you know but I, I believe I believe it is it is there. Even during riots, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. The police ought to be there. They to ought, protect, they ought to, to be protect. there to protect yes. the, 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 the protesters. Yes. Even du during protests, yes. they should be there. Even if it's a peaceful, peaceful demonstration, yes. they should be there. Yes. But the problem is, when can I see them there, they start making noise. Yeah, no. True. Once the police come to the site, they are the ones who cause disruptions. They are uh, the ones who throw canisters to these protesters, and then it turns to be violent. Uh, they, so uh, so uh, in, in your claim, you can substantiate that they are the ones who are being provo provoked. I can that, that, that they also provoke, provoke the, the mob. I can, I can confident because I've been in the University of Nairobi and we've had uh, cases where we actually go to the streets. And I can tell you, we can start a very peaceful uh, 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 protest, uh, head into the adversary towers, demanding for help and, all, and what have you. But no sooner do we get there than. I, I, I don't know whether you remember, uh, there was one at the University of Nairobi yeah. in 2014. Mm -hmm. So, b but then the current Embakasi East MP, Babo Wino, was mm. the student leader. So, he took us from the school, from school. We went down to Arambe Avenue. By that time, it was Jacob Kaimeni was the CS mm -hmm. education. You, you're also from University yeah, yeah, of Yeah, I'm a student. I, I'm a, of, of course, I'm a graduate from there. So, when we went there, that parliament road, mm -hmm. these officers, they uh, were strategic. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they did? They left us to go inside there, like we were now covering the whole road. Mm -hmm. Then looking in front of us, we see the we we, we saw them coming with the bus battalion. and everything, everything. The, the the officers, there were so many. The GSI, the the GSU, sorry. Looking at the back, they are also there now with the tear gas canisters. Just by looking at them, it Yanni, it was, it was. Chaotic. It was chaotic. I was forced who, to jump over. Who threw? Who made the first move? The, the officers started it. Of course, but the officers started it. I observed there were the people. They, they started it <laughs> live, <laughs> and it was serious. It was serious. And I can well, tell you, it is very bad if somebody dies in a protest. Like what happened in Nembu. They are going to protest against the extrajudicial killings of these two boys in a very unclear circumstances. Yet one of the protesters is shot dead 
by live ammunition. Uh, but what we need to understand, what we need to understand is that the way these guys are trained, there are some things maybe we, we don't know. We know that these people should be governed by the, by the, by the rule of law. We, they need to follow some, uh, follow some you know, doctrines and stuff. But you come to ask yourself why this is the, reason, the best way they always stop this. They always stop this protest and or maybe if these people are becoming too much radical. Well, um, I, I, I would like to put into perspective the fact that I believe that in, in uh, protests there are always two players. The protesters and the police. True. And uh, either player has the ability to make it chaotic or not. Either of the two. But in this case, now that we cannot, okay, uh, if we had a representative from the police unit, maybe they can be able to, to tell us yeah. what happened or, or on set. But now, um, now that it, it is what it is, is there a possibility of Kenya ever having protests that are peaceful? That where we don't have anybody throwing uh, stones? Because yes, we've seen pro pro protesters throwing stones. Even though we say that, oh, uh, they, 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 they came, they did this. They're protesters. The, the, stones. Uh, Looting takes place. Uh, the, the police uh, okay. are there to maintain law and order. Okay, there can reach a time when Kenyans can protest peacefully. I want you to look at it from this angle. We've been having protests about from the professional bodies, okay? Maybe the nut, yeah? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the doctors strike and stuff. Those people just work peacefully, yeah? No commotion, yeah. no nothing. They walk, their voices will be heard, and everything will happen and stuff. But when this thing comes now to a civilian, you, okay, not you, but maybe let, let me say now me and maybe him for, for a, just an example. Do, did, did you see what happened in South Africa a fortnight ago? It was chaotic. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. They were burning down malls and supermarkets. Did you see what happened in the U.S.? In the U.S., where, uh, it, now, now in both South Africa and in the U.S., it is the protesters it, it, who are burning down. Who are burning? That's why I'm and, telling and you. Rioting and looting. That's why I'm telling you. In both cases. That's why I'm telling you. Despite, yeah, the perceived civilization of a citizenry, yeah, a human being once is becoming chaotic, yeah, they will just dislodge from themselves the so-called civilization and stuff. But, but, but one thing that uh, he has mentioned that has just ca also uh, uh, hit me is, it depends on the, who the protesters are. Are you, are, are, are you organized yes, in are any organized? way? Are you How organized are you? Are you professional? Yeah. Okay, yes? But for me, uh, boiling it down to two things. One, the sanctity of human life mm -hmm. cannot be overemphasized. I don't think that it is right that we should peg our frustration when something has happened. Nothing can ever replace uh, a lost life. Yeah, like mm -hmm. uh, the loss of Hussein Moyo in Kiamaiko and even Benson and Emmanuel uh, back there in, um, in Embu. No matter what can be done in terms of the justice and the processes, there is nothing that can be done to actually replace the lost life. And so what we need to, is not a reactive system. It's not a, a system that responds to emotions, to you know, response to events, to situations. Uh -huh. But rather, we need to come to a point where we ask ourselves, what is it that we can do to actually protect any more loss of lives? Why should we be reacting to the system? Why should we be going out to the road fighting and and protesting because somebody has been killed in a, in an extrajudicial way, in an extrajudicial manner? Yet, the police are the people who are actually supposed to protect the common monarchy. People are frustrated. Mm -hmm. the, the system is hard. The economy is, is, is actually, it's, it's, it's messed up. People, have, people are depressed. And then you add on to it that you are, losing, you are you're actually taking the lives of common monarchy. To me, that is something that is, that is depressing. And it should be really looked upon. And if there are reforms which need to be made in the police sector, they actually need to be made as soon as possible. Well, tell us what you think about these particular issues and the stories that have been trending in the past one week. The hashtag is one in the morning at Ram Maguko and at Y254 channel. Ensure that you engage with us. We are live on our website, 
at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 ensure that you engage with us even on facebook uh, uh in this conversation it is youth and politics and now that you've touched on uh, those particular issues let's start on the political arena now uh it is now one year one year one year let me repeat that one year <laughs> <laughs> to the general elections and i'm wondering are we ready we have the uh, 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 polls that are sh shall take place on the 9th of um, August 2022. Uh, do we have the proper uh, legislation in regards to this, the preparedness that we are uh, so far as a country? Let me start with you, Evans. Um, in regards to this, so far, generally, are we ready for an election? I, I believe we are ready for an election. We are ready for it. Commissioning. Uh, the IBC has uh, stated this, and uh, it was even in one of the papers here of the People Daily here. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just quote what was uh, said. Uh, the, you know, uh, the commission looks up to looking at the ICT issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, ICT to fix the connection issue. It admits that the 2022 polls pose a serious challenge because of the inadequate funding and the COVID-19 pandemic. And I quote. The commission has been corresponding with CA uh, on the need to fix 3G internet connectivity, which culminated in a joint meeting with them. A task force made up of technical teams from both the CA and commission has been set up to handle the matter, even in terms of connectivity, uh, internet connectivity. Are we, do you feel like that is going to be sorted out? Yes, we feel like we are ready, but looking at this, it seems like preparations are still being made. Yeah, you know, the issue is that um, these preparations, yeah, they are not beyond human reach. They are just things which we can do. What and about you, you know, the, the, the issue with the, with, the, with the elections, this is a constitutional mandate. Actually, I, I heard you saying earlier that um, maybe we can be plugged into a constitutional lacuna. There is no lacuna. Is no lacuna? None. Where? It is written very well that elections will be held on such and such a date. Okay? It uh -huh. is very clear. There is no gap there. And no. there can even not be co co constitutional crisis. Th there was a report that was uh, given out by the commission. Yeah. And that report was titled uh, 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 I Electoral Law Reform in Kenya. Uh -huh. The IBC Experience. Mm -hmm. Now the commission recommended that parliament should enact the legislation to give effect to the two-thirds gender uh, representation rule provided under Article 81 of the constitution. Uh, so, so the two-thirds general rule is still an issue. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, there, there was a legislation, this the legislation which was meant to to deal with the issue of the two-thirds gender rule. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one of the suggestions was that the political parties, yeah, the political parties uh -huh. should ensure that in their representation, yeah, they. The overall, the overall representation from each and every political party can reflect or can drive us into a two-third gender stuff, you know. Mm. So maybe they will go, it's just a matter of calling these people, yeah, telling them that maybe this p political party, you should have this, uh, this number of, you should have this number of ladies in parliament. Eh? Mm, mm. This is not necessarily ladies, but uh, maybe men, and of course, gender. the gender. Mm. It's so <laughs> sensitive into that. Yeah. But uh, th that's how to solve it. You get? Okay. Because you know, l let's say um, um, maybe we nominate this position. We nominate. We nominate a man. Mm -hmm. This mm. other constituency will nominate, and the thing will be achieved. And it is a legislation, of course. Huh? It is mm -hmm. a legislation. So it uh, is something which, which it is a legislation which is in line and compatible with the constitutional requirement. So provided that it will, um, it, at the end of the day, it will, it will uh, fix the problem. We will have no constitutional crisis, and I don't believe that we will have one, because it mm -hmm. is something which is there. I'm also looking at by the time we have the swearing in of the commissioners. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Let me come to you, Mwati. For me. One of the things I would actually say uh, for me is the supremacy of the constitution and the sovereignty of the people of Kenya. And that 
scales down to the fidelity to the Constitution. We talk about the institutions mandated by the Constitution to implement the Constitution itself. And these are independent in terms of the, 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 the operations. Um, we have seen in our country uh, over and above many, many senior citizens, quote unquote, they don't respect the rule of law. They don't respect uh, judgments being made by courts. And um, to the point that they have become irrelevant, you know, giving a verdict after a verdict, but they are not being followed. So when you start hearing people saying that we are not ready for an election, uh, and these people are key makers in the government, then you start feeling there is a problem somewhere. Because that in itself shows there are people whose intention is selfish. They want to manipulate the system for their own gain. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody starts telling you that, are we ready to hand off? If somebody starts saying that there is no sufficient capacity to actually hand over to the next team, then you ask yourself, are you not the same person who has actually mandated to oversee a smooth transition. Now, I'm, so I'm, if it's the issue of funds, mm. then there needs to be a very smooth um, relationship mm. between the National Treasury, uh, the government, and the IBC to ensure that, of course, that's, that's an entire government structure. So there is no government and there is no national treasury. Mm. But, but, but you know, this time around, we are looking at an election that like no other. Because we are doing an election during a pandemic. Absolutely. And, 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 uh, but I think the constitution is quite clear there. What are these areas? Is it war? Whenever yeah, there is war? When there is war. And, yeah. um, maybe the conflict, the violence, yeah. civil war. By the civil, civil or war. there is a, a, a external ag aggression yeah. uh, against us, which is not there. So when, when, not, when those <laughs> things are not fulfilled. But yeah. I think also there is a sense in which the reality will also hit at. You know, you, when you delay the system, it's actually justice delayed this, justice, justice denied. denied. Yeah. So by the end of it all, we might come back to the drawing board and say, yes, we have been fighting this thing that we don't have, we so want, we don't have the capacity okay, to run an election. Let me ask Ram something. Mm -hmm. Ram, you know how the, uh, how the electoral process always co is conducted. Mm -hmm. People line there, they are being, they are, the details being taken, they are being confirmed <coughs> and stuff. How do you say that the pandemic will affect that? Are, are people aligning in banks as we speak right now? Well, the fact is we, are, we do uh, have the commissioners that are yet to be sworn in. Of the course, who has already nominated them? They are waiting to be approved by the parliament. What about BBI? What, what about this? You, you mentioned justice. De de I was talking justice about justice denied. denied justice BBI denied. is still in court right now. We are waiting for the ruling. So, so those delays in the long run, they will actually affect us. You so know, we will go back to the system and say, guys, we don't have time. Will no, the BBI no, 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 issue affect this election? BBI will not affect the uh, elections. The verdict is being issued 20th of August. The so BBI will not affect the elections. Elections, the general elections will be held on 9th of August 2022. Do you know the reason? There is no provision in the BBI yeah, for the extension of the presidential term limit. There is no such kind of theme. Or uh -huh. theme. You get the point? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, Unless the, and you see, this is a, it is a constitutional issue yeah. for you to extend the term of the president, yes. the term limit of the president. It will force that somebody, when Jiku initiates the process, you go collect signatures, you do all these kind of things, so that you all are referenda for Uru, Kenyatta, to extend this term limit. So um, this, this push by some officials to postpone the elections, do you think like it will succeed? It cannot succeed. I believe so. Your thoughts? I would say it is based on the verdict, maybe, per se, the 20th of August verdict on the Court of Appeal as far as the, the issue of the BBI is concerned. So until then, uh, that's when we can have a substantial claim about what will happen. Mm -hmm. But for me, and I feel generally as a population and as a, a, a common monainchi, we are not ready to have an extended term of service for yeah, yeah unle Trump unless we engage in those things you are the, the stuff you are you are mentioning earlier mm -hmm. be it maybe civil the civil war yeah. be it those, maybe th those kind of stuff mm -hmm. but as things are right now as things are right now uh, th there is nothing which can stop it mm -hmm. there's nothing we, I, i'm also looking at uh, the political parties yeah. we, we, we need to have them registered so far i'm looking at uh, the the the, the as at May this year, 
the register of political parties uh, that is uh, undated to had uh, uh, registered 73 political parties in Kenya, while those with the provisional uh, uh, as of August 2021 stood at 23 parties. So what is the implication thereof? Will it have uh, any effect on those who shall be able to, uh, have to be capable of vying for this election next year? Yeah, you know the law. Because by the time you're you, you, you're done register, whether you'll be qualified to register or not, also have an if, or has an effect on whether you will be allowed to vie at the elections. I, I, I think uh, I'm not sure of this, but I think uh, it is uh, it should be six months prior. Yeah, I believe so. Uh -huh. Even for the, the deputy president <coughs> to vie with this UDA, uh -huh. he get to move out of jubilee. I think by February. Okay. Uh -huh. you get the point. Okay. Yeah. So that's also an issue there. Registration no, no, that, of political parties. No, that's a personal issue. How is that affecting the whole country or even the general election? But I think generally what is being pushed around is a narrative that we are not ready. And sometimes... Okay. You believe so? Yeah. A mm. narrative that we are not ready. Oh, okay. How, how is the narrative coming by there? The narrative is like all those things... Uh, political parties, political commissioners, parties, BBI. Talk about the funding. You know, all those systems <laughs> Let me tell you, if, together. If that to actually uh, make us feel as Kenyans, uh, remember this is politics. And politics is about narrative, it's about perception. Ram, let me ask you this. And uh, just uh, a minute. Yes, yes. So the perception being pushed around mm. is that we are not ready. And I can tell you for a fact, mm -hmm. as we move along, and that's why I'm really interested in knowing the verdict of the Court of Appeal, 20th of August, mm -hmm is that it will actually determine the next foot that we are going to take. As a youth, do you feel like if we would go for the election, you are ready for that? We are ready for a new government, as like yesterday, <laughs> or the day before yesterday. <laughs> All right, now let me come to us. Yes, I know you are itching for, <laughs> to comment there. You know, he, uh, I, I'm not sure of the people is, uh, uh, is accusing of uh, intending to extend the terms. But let me maybe believe that is the head of this government. Let, let me try to believe so. But if I told the head of this government, who is, the, who is President Uru Kenyatta, was determined to see that there is an extension of his term. Yeah, he, he hasn't said that. He, he, he even said <laughs> that's a perception. that he's waiting for his yeah, term. It's a perception, it's a narrative. It's a perception which is accusing the government of, of generating. Is that true? Not necessarily. No. O okay, you are saying that there's is there there I'm, saying, I'm talking mind. about a narrative, so it ne ne necessarily you said that we can perceive. We perceive maybe that's the, not the intention, but mm. we are the we are the we know, perceive like that we are not ready. It's communication. Yeah, of course. And communication when you when when you actually relay information, mm. many times it actually depends on the receiver. So if the receiver has prejudgment prejudice that informs how they're going to receive the information. And so in that case, it means that you have a perception which is actually biased. But, but uh, uh, I want to look at it this way. Huh? There's, a pl there, there, there's a point where this message is coming from. Okay. And it is generated by maybe a human being. Okay. Maybe it's a leader. Maybe it's a powerful person. Maybe, himself. maybe not. Maybe. So okay, let's say mm -hmm. as per, this person wants us to perceive that we are not ready. Okay. Let's say maybe it's a government official. Mm -hmm. and stuff. <clears throat> but if I told it was a government official who wanted, to do, who wanted this done, yeah? No one wants it. Okay, let's say, <laughs> the way let's, let's, yeah. say let's say because you know there's this narrative. Okay, so, so, so you want us to uh, let's say assume. Assume, okay. As, so you're saying so assume. Yeah. You know what he was saying? If I listen to him well, and of course I understood him, I believe so, mm -hmm. is that there is unseen hand working for us to perceive that we are not ready for an election. By you even reading that those things, I think you've refer, referred to that. Yes. If at all there were some unseen hands, yeah, mm. that want us to believe that they, we are not ready for an election. I believe those people could have done that thing in a very strategic way, different from how we think. Number one, by right now, by now, we could have not been having the commission as being nominated to be approved by the parliament. It could have come later, even by next year. Get that point? So that we are in a legal, a legal lacuna. lacuna. Or yeah. Number two, the president and the, peop the initiators of the BBI could have placed that, they could have placed the presidential limit issue in that, in that document. Get that point? Which document? The BBI, for have instance. Have you read the document? I've read the document. Okay. The, it is not there in the document. There is nowhere in the, that document which is written that president, who, that the, 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 the day for election is, is not August 9th, 2022, it, it is maybe March 2023. There's nowhere in the Constitution. We, in this even 
the, uh, the uh, constitutional amendment bill. The so, bill. so, so your point is that there is n my point is nobody uh. intends to postpone elections. Let the Tanga Tanga people not peddle this kind of stuff. Let me now just say that. You get the point. Mm. Nobody wants to postpone elections. Elections will be done on. And I actually was so happy at how the deputy president confirmed it when he was being interviewed. He said that elections will be on August 9th. All right. Yes. I want us to, to touch on yet another, uh, 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 another issue here. Uh, we have the Mount Kenya region. Uh, in this particular region, we have uh, people like uh, Moses Kuria, who has uh, the People's Empowerment Party. We have the People's Service Party uh, form, formed by Mwangi Hiyunjuri, the former CS. We are looking at Usawa Kawote, owned by Mwangi Wairia. We have, uh, uh, you know, so many parties which, which are formed by leaders from the Mount Kenya region. And this conversation came in in the past, uh, in, during the weekend, I believe so, of having one party, one tribal party, from the Mount Kenya region. What do you think about that? Is that a right move for Mount Kenya? Actually, I heard what Mwangi Kunjuri was saying. He, sa he did not talk of parties. Mm. He said that they need coalitions, like coalitions. NASA. Uh -huh. They need coalitions from the Mount Kenya region, both east and western, western part of the Mount Kenya region, so that they speak as a, as as a, a block. block. Let me tell you. For a fact, among those small people, be it Moses Kuria, be it Mwangi Kunjuri, be it Mwangi Wairia, be it Mkiraitu Murungi, be it Putamunya, Peter Munya, sorry, all those people, they have their political parties. Is that true? Nobody among those people can bring those people together, except, where the point from? Except the president. Except President Uru Kenyatta. So he's, uh, he's dead on arrival. Is, is that on a, it depends on <laughs> who is driving it. Mwati? I think Do you I agree with what he's saying? I agree with him uh. because um, as far as uh, the, the leadership of Mount Kenya region is concerned, it's still intact under the leadership of uh, Our Excellency, the President. Yeah. And, um, and so trying to, it's like using the back door to access a house, you know. Uh. It's, it has its own structures, systems, and so you miss out the point when you fail to, to hit the target. Yeah. So for me, I think um, I strongly agree with you. It might be a good, uh, something that is an amazing dream, but uh, it could actually be misplaced to some point. Uh, I'm, lo I'm looking at what uh, Rongo Kangata said. Eh? He dismissed this tot in totality. Mm -hmm. He was so vocal on this. <laughs> he, he dismissed uh, what Mwangi Kiunjuri was saying. Yeah, he was. Uh, he, he, he's against this formation. He was saying that it it goes against the, uh, uh, you know, the, the 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 desire that Kenya wants. That we are moving forward. That we moved from those politics of tribe. Yeah, tribe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, l let me quote what he said. He said, "As a nation, we need to speak in one voice." So that the people can be united, but dividing ourselves into regions is not a good thing. Yeah. Which you need to find out, is it? Because we even look at the Mulebe nation, they're looking into <laughs> coming together so that they have one blocking, uh, or they can vote as a block. Is that the case? Even in the Rift Valley region, they are looking into that. It, it, such conversations are there. Now, uh, he said... That if anybody wants to reach out to Ruto, they can do so without forming a party because all that is uh, that is required is their support. Is Ruto, Honorable Ruto, the target in this conversation here? In oh, your oh, thoughts? Oh, 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 oh. You see, um, Ruto has got his interest, and his interest is to have as many UDA people as po many uh, as many of them as possible. Uh -huh being behind him as a party, not even as a coalition. Get that point. That's why you see him. Actually, you know, when you, re when you watch and view the activities of the deputy president in Mount Kenya region, there's a way he's been playing his politics. Yeah? There's a time he was with the TSP, the Mwangi Kunjuri, and people were, people were, people were you know, talking a lot about him being the deputy of Ruto, 
Then there came time for Moses Kuria. Moses Kuria became so uh. vocal and popular. He won the Juja seat. Of course, his uh, candidate won Juja seat. So people started again another conversation that maybe Moses Kuria will take it. Then it went, it went that way. Ndindinyoro was coming. It went. Some people were claiming even that Martha Karua will come through. Looking at all these kind of things, it shows you that there is some conflict among these potential Mount Kenya kingpin uh, Uru inheritors, which shows that it is, it is only one person who will come and give these people the direction. I believe so. I strongly believe so. And let us look at even the demographics. Let's look at the demographics in, in Mount Kenya region. St starting by even the age. Do you think, do you think that uh, the, the young people will vote the same way as the, their older counterparts? All right. I want, to, I, I want us to, to drop this conversation up because time is not on our side. Now, but yeah. uh, the next conversation is coming up in a bit. Now, in a nutshell, yeah. UDA, um, is UDA going to be the uniting factor? We had that conversation of the bottom up, <laughs> top bottom, whichever thing. Down. Yeah. Um, is UDA going to bring in a political movement that is going to shake up, especially the Mount Kenya region, where this conversation is all uh, circumnavigating around? Uh, as we have a final word, and I'm giving each one of you just a minute each. Let me start with you, Martin. So uh, for me, uh, uh, in honesty of conversation, UDA is actually like a movement. And for real, it has attracted attention, hate, and love in equal measure. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, no one can assume, no one can sit down and, uh, and just assume UDA. Not in our world today, not in our country. Okay. UDA is such a force, it's a uh -huh. movement, mm -hmm. and it has brought down the aspect of bottom-up economics and uh, the whole issue of how to realign uh, the gravitation of wealth resources and, uh, and, and all that from the common one ain't you going up. Oh, yeah. And I think that is what Kenyans are ready to hear. And so mm -hmm. Ruto has actually hit the target uh, where it is actually... Uh, you believe so? Yeah, all right. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Final word, yes. Uh, you see, um, I don't believe that UDA will, um, will uh, move Mount Kenya region the way people are claiming. Because there are a lot of glass sailings. We have a year before the general elections, so that's true. His Excellency, the President, Uru Kenyatta, he has not yet spoken. We don't know his mind. But as things go, we, something, is, something is, very, is getting clear by day that is not much into good terms with this deputy. I want to tell you something, Ram, today. His Excellency, the President, Uru Kenyatta, will determine a lot as far as, maybe not countrywide, but for Mount Kenya, region, yeah. Uru will play a very big role. All in right. Mount in Kenya. succession. In succession, it will okay. play a very big role. Okay. It will play a very big role. And I need to tell you that there is an age, there are some people there who will who still understand who All right. Yeah. Okay. And that's true. I, I believe you are coming from, the, from that region. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, we, we hope for the best. Uh, I was with John Mwati to my extreme right and uh, Evans uh, Maru uh, in this conversation today. That brings us to the end of youth and politics on this particular Monday conversation. Remember to keep the to, uh, keep tweeting, keep commenting. The hashtag is uh, why in the morning at Ramago and at Y254 channel. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. After this, Sankara Kayesu, the one and only, will, come, will be coming back with a conversation on, w, on uh, MCM. Masters concerning relationships. Do not miss that. This is why in the morning. <laughs>